Myself, Dr. Gibran Amar presents to you Simply Pathology and today we are back with a very important session. In today's topic of discussion, as you can see that we are going to discuss the approach to the MD-DNB Pathology Exam 2024. So, this topic is very, very important for all the exam going residents or the third year PGs who are going to sit or are due to sit for the final examination in 2024. Okay. Now, for the sake of simplicity, I have divided this particular lecture into two main parts. In the first part, we are going to discuss in details about the exam pattern. Okay, the exam pattern which has been laid down by the National Medical Council and which has been revised on 2nd November 2022. Okay, so we are going to see that what are the changes and what are the pattern which has been laid down by the National Medical Council. And after speaking about the exam pattern, we are also going to read about the approach to the exam, how you should approach, what are some of the important tips and tricks and how you can ace your final examination. Okay, so this is all that we are going to discuss in today's topic of discussion. Now, as I already told you that the, the NMC has given the exam pattern. But remember, this year in 2023, I have gone through the question papers of nearly 50 universities. Okay. And I have seen that out of these 50 universities, only one or two have seriously followed the NMC, uh, you know, exam pattern. <clears throat> okay. So, it is very, very important that you follow the pattern which is there in your particular university. Because as of now, there is no overall you know, there is no overall consensus, uh, you know, as to the pattern or the exam pattern of NMC. Okay. But why I want to discuss the NMC exam pattern with you people? Because the reason is because uh, the core of the pattern is the same across all the universities. So, whatever NMC has given, everyone has not followed 100% of that, but they, you know, have followed 80-90%. Okay, 80-90% of what has been given by the NMC is followed by everyone. Only the pattern is changing here and there little bit. So, that is why I want to make you understand the pattern of the NMC and after that it will become very easy for you people to understand that really how the exam will be conducted. Okay. So, remember that there are three major components or exam components of the National Medical Council. If you see, the first component is the thesis. Second component is the theory. Now, there are four theory papers, okay, and in total, the theory is carrying 400 marks and the practical, <clears throat> the practical carries 500 marks, wherein 100 marks is, uh, you know, is for your internal assessment, wherein 100 marks is for internal assessment, okay. So, let us begin, okay, the, you know, uh, first we are going to discuss about the exam pattern as it has been given by the NMC. Okay, so the most important prerequisite for appearing in the exam is the presence of the logbook. So, you should have a logbook which is complete. Okay, what is the logbook? See, logbook is nothing but it is a documentation of all the activities that you have participated in during the past three years. So, what are these activities? Whether you have participated in regular seminars, whether you have participated in journal clubs, whether you have done all the practical work in your uh, the, you know, in your department, whether you have, uh, you know, taken up the teaching activity or, you know, all these departmental activities are basically, uh, they are written down in a particular logbook. So, logbook should be complete. Without logbook, okay, you are not eligible to appear for the exam. This is the number one requirement. Number two requirement, at least you should have given two presentations, okay, at the state or the national level. Either one paper, uh, you know, one paper, uh, you know, uh, should be published or accepted or the draft published should be there in the index journal. So, this is a requirement, okay. So, you should have two presentations, any presentations you can do, paper presentation, poster presentation, at least two presentation you should do and one of the papers should be published, accepted or even in the draft state in the index journal. So, these are the important prerequisites for appearing in the exams according to the latest National Medical Council guidelines, okay. Now, the, the National Medical Council has clearly stated that the MD exam will be conducted in three main parts. Number one thing, you will have a thesis. Number two, you will have a theory. And number uh, three, you will have practical exam. Okay. So, first we are going to see the thesis. Now, the guideline for the thesis is that it should be submitted at least six months before the theory and the practical. So, it has to be submitted at least six months before theory and practical. Very, very important. 
he says has to be examined by three examiners one will be your internal and two will be your external and remember the internal and two external examiner who is going to examine your thesis work okay they are not the same as the one who is going to look at your theory and practical so this is very very important step okay by the nmc okay only after the acceptance of thesis you can appear for your final exams that is your theory and your practicals and you have to obtain 50% separately in your theory exam and 50% separately in your practical exam this is the major requirement now uh, you know if you know that the nmc has been taking up uh, the thesis work or the research work by the students very seriously that is why they have also you know made it mandatory for all the first year students who are joining as uh, you know in, in md pathology that they have to complete a course okay which is basically on the research methodology okay within the 6 months of joining the course so this has been made mandatory if you see many of you must have completed this as well okay so this is with regards to the thesis so thesis is number one the most important criteria without which you cannot even appear for the exam along with that there are certain criteria like the logbook and at least two presentations has to be there in the state or national level and one paper should be published accepted or in the draft uh, stage in the index journal okay now coming to the theory aspect okay so theory is for 400 marks there are four theory papers so the pattern of the theoretical exam okay as advised by the nmc it is that there should be one long answer question and there should be around six to eight short answer questions okay for individual paper this is what is the basic uh, requirement by the nmc the, this is the nmc guideline but is it followed is it followed by all the universities the answer is big no i will show you there are different kinds of patterns okay in different universities so that is why today also i am telling you that what is very important you please uh, you know go back to your university and see the last five year question papers and see the pattern of your university that is very very important for you to understand okay i will show you now as per this is as per the the the, the particular clip has been taken directly from the nmc website if you see that there are four papers okay and over here there is a slight change so paper number one it comprises all the basic science as applied to the subject that means along with the general pathology okay you will also have immunopathology and molecular biology molecular biology you know all the next generation sequencing pcr flow cytometry okay all these things will be there <coughs> immunopathology like immunofluorescent study okay or any kind of immunopathology including your all the immune system okay car t cell therapy so everything in relation to the immunopathology even molecular biology all the molecular aspects okay can be asked in paper number one in addition to general pathology okay paper number two will not only have the surgical pathology or the systemic pathology but they will also include cytopathology should include this is what the nmc's guideline is okay this is what is the nmc guideline Paper 3 should comprise your hematology, blood banking that is transfusion medicine and laboratory medicine that is your clinical pathology including all the instruments and quality control. Okay, This is paper number 3 and paper number 4 is recent advance in the subject. This is how the exam, the theory should be conducted. Now what is different over here, previously you know molecular biology was not very well defined. Now the NMC have defined and included them in the paper number one. Okay, very rightly they have done that. Secondly, previously the cytology or cytopathology was there in the paper three, but right now they have actually, you know, shifted it to paper number two. Now, this is the NMC guideline and whatever your, uh, your university is following might be quite different from the NMC. So, my advice to you is you please go and, uh, you know, you please follow your university. Please follow the respective university and please make it very clear with the professors as to the distribution of subjects among the different papers. Okay, so this you have to see and the best way is to go for the last five year question paper. And also you should go to your professors and your HOD and you should confirm the same that whether the pattern will be same or whether they are following the NMC guideline. So this is very, very important to understand. Okay, so this is not very, uh, you know, it's not a very big deal. 
and it is very very simple and uh, most of you will be able to clear out uh, these uh, simple doubts okay <coughs> while you discuss the same with your professors and with the HODs because they are the ones who will be setting the paper or they will be in contact with the other university personnel and they will help you out so this is very very important now the third very important aspect is your practicals okay and the NMC has just given a guideline that the practical should comprise 500 marks which is including 100 marks internal assessment okay and the practical should be conducted over a period of two days because there are several aspects that the examiners have to test which is not possible to to carry out in a single day okay so practical should be done in a two day period okay now remember these marks okay these are very very tentative and they might vary significantly from one university to other but this is how the NMC have asked or the NMC have given the guidelines. So, I am sharing. Okay. So, do not get uh, stuck that you know that this is the final and this you know uh, the exam will be conducted in this particular manner. It might vary from university to university. For example, when I had given the exam, the practicals were carrying 600 marks and ev even the marks distribution was quite different okay, as compared to the NMC guideline. So, it might differ for your university as well. So, do not take this, you know, very seriously. But what I really want to make you understand is the division of the different tables in the practicals or how the practical is being divided. This is what is important for you because this is going to be more and less similar in most of the universities. <clears throat> so, what is it that you should keep in mind? So, practicals are divided into four main aspects. The first aspect, the first part is the histopathology including grossing and autopsy carrying 150 marks the second aspect is cytopathology including the histocytotechnics carrying 80 marks the third aspect is your hematology blood banking clinical pathology carrying 120 marks and d okay uh, it sums up your grand viva okay uh, viva on the basic sciences basic science means all the different molecular biology charts immunopathology these are the basic science general pathology okay communication skills which will be tested with the help of your micro teaching and thesis all of them together carrying only 50 marks so this kind of division by and large has been given by the nmc but it is not followed the division of marks is not followed uh, you know exactly in most of the universities it may be followed it may not be followed but what is very important that all these different aspects, okay, histopathology, gross autopsy, cytopathology, histocytotechnics, that is the tissue processing, hematology, blood banking, clinical pathology, all these particular sections, viva, basic sciences, okay, charts, uh, mic micro teaching thesis, all these will be asked to you in the exam in some form or the other. So, this you have to be very, very aware of. This is what is my idea. So, I will be discussing, so what is it that they are asking in the practical? So, the histopathology and the grossing autopsy. So, in the histopathology, as you know, that they are basically keeping 12 to 15 slides minimum will be there based out of histopathology on which the OSP will be based, okay? Your viva will be based on them, okay? So, remember one thing that during your exam, when you are having the slides, so there is 5 plus 1 usually. 5 minutes are given for the identification and 1 minute is given for writing down, describing and giving a diagnosis. So, there is separate mask for description and there is separate mask for your, uh, for giving the uh, diagnosis, okay. So, you should write both of them, okay. Not only that, okay, you might also be given certain biopsy cases with ancillary test reporting. For example, you are giving a breast biopsy with ER, PR, HER2 new, okay, with ER, PR, HER2 new, okay. So, you have to, you know, you might be given, this is, you know, this is by and large given by the NMC, okay, these can be kept, okay, for your exams as well. So, histopathology around 12 to 15 slides can be there and along with that, you can have a grossing and autopsy table. Now, in the grossing table or in the grossing room, you might be asked to describe a particular specimen. You might to give you a, professional, uh, a provisional diagnosis from the gross findings and uh, differential diagnosis. And you might also be asked to perform the grossing in front of the examiner and they might see how you are taking the sections, when you are taking the sections, how you are putting in the cassette, what is the orientation, whether you are well versed with the grossing process or no. This is what is very important. Uh, apart from that, you might be having a table that is the autopsy table wherein various organs might be kept and you might be given various case history. So, for example, a post-mortem case might be there, okay. 
following you know uh, intestinal tumor okay then there was an obstruction and then the patient died and then you know post mortem they saw that they found a tumor is there or for example there might be a uh, case of a you know them them them, them uh, you know they might keep a heart okay showing an area of infarction okay so post mortem there is an infarction so what are the changes related to the infarction so there are certain list of autopsy diagnosis okay so every university has some list of autopsy cases and diagnosis which they show before the exams okay so you have to go and you have to to be well versed with those autopsy cases and autopsy diagnosis okay so this is about your histopathology grossing or autopsy station then comes your cytopathology and histocytotechnics so what is under the what is asked under the cytopathology uh, section again around 5 to 8 exam slides are kept okay again ospp is carried out okay viva is carried out on them and they might ask you any questions following that and again over here there are marks for writing down the description there are marks for writing down the diagnosis okay so you have 5 to 8 slide and then your viva is going to follow based on that and based on what you answer okay so this is cytopathology again one station is there again histocytotechnics or tissue processing as we call it okay Again, this is another uh, particular uh, uh, part or the table for the exam wherein you will be asked to carry out a particular stain like the H and E staining. The, along with that, uh, you know, uh, in a very standard manner, they are also asking a special stain. For example, pass stain okay, or reticulin stain. Some standard special stain is also asked. So, as a standard, you are asked to carry out one routine stain and one a special stain. A routine stain, usually you are asked H and E staining and a special stain for example past stain or any one special stain you have to perform okay and along with that the examiner might also ask you about the process and the steps of tissue processing right from the fixation okay to the tissue embedding and uh, microtome uh, microtomy and the tissue cutting as well so you might also be asked okay we were asked in our exam to take a block of tissue and to take this uh, you know uh, sections also okay you might be asked to do that as well so the entire tissue processing including frozen section or the cryostat if you are having a cryostat whatever machines you are having in the college you should be well versed with the working of those machine okay because then only the examiner will understand that whether you have worked or you have not worked in the past three years okay so this is the tissue processing table or the tissue processing section okay after that you have the hematology blood banking clinical pathology and the clinical biochemistry so in the hematology section there are different parts like you might you will be asked everyone will be asked to make a pbs peripheral blood smear then they will keep certain exam cases or hematology exam cases clinical exercises okay or they might keep the exam slides also for example there might be a clinical case of iron de deficiency anemia or there might be a case of a hemolytic anemia or there might be a case of a drug induced hemolytic anemia or there might be case of a malaria okay or there might be case of a cml okay or aml or some leukemias or some infectious etiology or there might be hemophagocytosis or for example leishmaniasis or certain cases like that might be there in the exams so there are different kinds of uh, hematology cases which can be kept either just in, in the form of slides they might keep certain slides with certain histories and or they might keep it as a clinical exercise as in there will be a particular uh, you know case history and depending on the case history you have to give a pro you know and they might give you slides okay for supporting so they will give you that this is the case history and these are the slides so make a diagnosis apart from that some cases you know they might you might also be provided with the bone marrow aspiration and bone marrow biopsy as well so in this particular case when the bone marrow aspiration and biopsy is provided to you you should be able to interpret those findings okay this is very very important Apart from that, under the hematology section, you, they, they might ask you or they might give you HPLC chart or flow cytometric charts, okay, the interpretation. They will not give you very difficult ones, very easy ones only they will give you. They will give you electrophoresis strips or osmotic fragility charts, okay, or even I have forgot to add, for example, platelet function test, PFTs, they might also keep, okay. So, these are some of the charts that it might ask you, okay, from the hematology part. Then the hematology exercises as I already told you, okay, so they might give you a particular clinical scenario and they might say then write down the, uh, you know, relevant investigations after that. Then they might also give the auto analyzer data interpretation, okay, they might give you a strip and they might ask you to interpret or they might give you a histogram or a scatterogram might be given to you and they might ask you, so what is the inference or what is your inference from this particular thing. They might also give, give certain, you know, charts um, as well hematology charts like hplc charts okay so this is what they can ask you from the hematology part 
Then there is a blood banking part wherein you might be asked to perform blood grouping or the combs testing. So how a combs test is done? If you have uh, everyone is having a posting in the blood bank, okay, minimum 15 to uh, 15 days to one month posting in the blood banking is there. So over there, at least how the blood grouping is done, what is the common method, okay, how they are interpreting the blood groups by the gel card interpretation technique. How the comb test is done? How do you interpret the comb's test? Okay, uh, gel card interpretation. How do I, you know, how it is normally done, which is very very common in today's blood banking. So if you are having the posting in the blood bank, it is very imperative that you attend the blood bank posting and you see how the interpretation, how the grouping is being done. Okay, currently in the blood banks. Then there is the clinical pathology station, or over there they will give you a particular clinical case scenario will be given. Okay, so you, so for example, a nephrotic syndrome case or a diabetes mellitus case or a nephritic syndrome case. So whatever case is there and you might be given along with that, you know, you might have to carry out a particular biochemical examination as well. For example, the urine proteins, okay, urine uh, uh, sugar, okay, or urine ketone bodies. Or, okay, along with that, you might be provided with a fluid, for example, a CSF or any pleural fluid, acidic fluid, and you might be asked to carry out the cell count cell type. Okay, so all these clinical pathology exercises is again very important. Again, under the clinical pathology section, they might keep certain quality control charts as well, like the LJ charts, the Levi Jennings charts. LJ charts can be kept okay in the exams as well. LJ charts, okay, L Levi Jennings chart that is there, it can be kept in the exams as well. So this is about the clinical pathology section. Okay, so wherein you will have a particular clinical case history and then you will have to answer accordingly. Okay, a clinical case will be there. So, you know, that is the clinical pathology portion. Now, apart from that, you might have the basic sciences. So, basic sciences, you might get 10 to 15 basic spots, including the electron micrographs. Okay, they, they might give you electron micrographs and they might ask you to identify. Then, apart from that, you might also get immunofluorescence charts and then you, you might be asked, for example, from the vesicobullous lesional skin. So, they might give you a clinical history. They might provide you with an immunofluorescence chart and they might ask you, what is the test? What is the interference? Okay, what is the... The, the, or they might give you a kidney chart as well. Okay, so immunofluorescence, their applications in the different places. So this is also very, very important and they might ask you different questions from this part. Then uh, they might give you certain uh, histochemical, cytochemical stainings can be used. MPO staining, some charts can be given from there as well. So interpret the chart, what is the chart? They might ask you the procedure as well. Okay, so you should be very thorough with the leukocyte cytochemistry as well as the RBC cytochemistry. Then IHC stains can be given as well. The examiner might give you some slides, okay, very simple, ER, PR, H2, and he might ask you to interpret them, okay, even the PCR results can be given to you and you might be asked to interpret. So, these are some of the basic sciences. So, some charts from the basic science can also be kept in the exam, okay. Apart from the basic science, you will have a basic teaching exercise in the form of a micro teaching, wherein a topic might be given to you randomly or a topic can be given you one day just before the exam. So, what happened with us was, that we were around nine students and nine topics were given but no one okay none, none of us we were not given an individual topic so what has was done that these nine topics were there they were given to nine students and in the final day there will be a lottery wherein you will take out and out of the nine topic any one topic you will have to teach okay so that is the micro teaching so over there usually 10 minutes time is given for the micro teaching wherein you have the opportunity okay to establish yourself as a you know as a teacher because once you pass as an md you can be associated with a medical college wherein you have to undertake uh, undertake the teaching activities also so this is a test of that part as well and finally there is a general viva or a grand viva okay wherein after in the end okay what can happen that uh, they can ask you several other questions and several other things based on your performance. Okay, now all these things, they can be done separately that we have discussed or they can be mixed, okay, together, okay, as per the examiner's wish or as per the practicality, okay, they can mix and match, okay. I, I will tell you how the things were carried out in my time in our university. I am going to share my experience as well, okay. So, why I have discussed this portion with you people because so that you understand what is it that you are going to face during the practicals okay and these are the guidelines which are given by the national medical council so all these things that i have discussed with you in details till now okay these will be asked to you in some form or the other okay so you have to be very thorough so after having gone through this entire uh, you know uh, division of the practicals you have a fair bit of an idea that what is it that you have to prepare 
So all these different things you have to prepare individually because they will ask you all these things in the exam. And you should be very well versed with all these things, okay, before you appear for your practical exam. These are very, very easy. These are very, very scoring and a lot of marks can be made, especially in this particular practical session. Okay, okay. Now, having completely discussed the exam pattern, especially with regards to the NMC, now I am going to discuss how you can prepare and approach your final MD exams. Okay, so please pay a lot of attention. Now, as I told you previously also, and I have been telling this okay for many years now, and I have been telling this every time that please and please and please, the first step that you have to take once you are enrolled in the MD course or in the DNB course, you have to see the last five year university exam question paper. The first step, the second step, the third step, because all the answers to all of your questions are lying in this particular thing. Last five year exam question are very, very, very important. So first I am going to discuss the, the do's and the don't for the theory exam. I am going to give you all the rationale behind my tips and tricks and how you can follow them to ace in your exams. The first thing that is the theory exam, very, very important. The theory exams, if you see, always remember during a theory exam, you have to carry the admit card and admit card will only be issued to you once your thesis has been cleared by your HOD or by your respective professor. So thesis submission comes first. After that only you will get the admit card and you will be able to sit for the theory exam. So let me discuss about the theory exams, okay, point by point. So first thing, remember, every university has their own theory exam pattern. NMC has given a guideline, should follow like this, but all universities are following their own pattern as of now. So for example, this is one pattern wherein they are following, in some part they are following the long answer question and short answer question. So one LAQ and several short answer question, like for example, this somewhat like the NMC. This is another pattern wherein you are having, okay, 10 LAQs or 10 long answer questions, okay, each carrying 10 marks. All of them, they carry the same marks, okay. And again, there are also certain questions which are actually carrying 50 marks each and they are not following 100 marks. They are actually 150 marks. Okay, so if you see 50 marks, 50 marks and 50 marks. So actually over here, you were supposed to answer, you know, uh, any two out of three, okay, any two out of three, you are supposed to answer. So they are just 50 mark question, only two question. So what I want to tell you is that it is, you know, the exam pattern is quite varied among different universities and you have to follow whatever is followed in your particular university. Okay, so I hope you understand this particular important aspect, the first point. The second important point is that usually 70 to 80 percent of the questions that is coming in your practical exam, uh, in your theory exam is a repeat or a common question and this repeat or common question, it is from a pool of 150 to 200 question, okay, which is nothing but the last five to seven year exam paper. So remember 70 to 80 percent questions are very, very easy. This is an average estimate. Okay, and this is coming from the last five to seven year question paper pool. And those last five to seven year question paper pool, if you take them together, it is comprising nearly 150 to 200 exam question. Now, if you see in total in MD pathology, there are more than 500 to 600 exam questions. Okay, so there are more than 500 to 600 exam questions. Now, what I'm telling you, I'm not telling you that you don't prepare all the question. You only prepare the last five and seven year. No, what I am telling you that from this, the, from the list of 150 to 200 questions, that is from the last five to seven years, from where mostly this 70 to 80 percent exam questions are coming, you prepare them first. Only and only once you are thorough with your last five to seven year exam questions that you go for the remaining questions or the remaining new question. So the thing is first you solve the last five to seven year question paper. After that, whatever remaining questions you feel is important, you solve them. But if you go and if you make a target that no, I have to complete all the 600 questions, you will not be able to perform nicely in the exam. Okay, please know this. It is not easy to remember 500, 600 exam question. Okay, now I will show you this particular exam paper. If you can see on the left hand side, this particular exam paper, this is the paper number one. If you see what is this, this is your paper number one. 
Now this paper number one, if you see, they are having 10, 10 questions and if you see the question, uh, all the different questions, you can understand what I'm talking about. Describe the role of adhesion molecules in acute inflammation. Again, very easy question, very common question, repetitive question. Describe the process of phagocytosis and intracellular destruction of microbes. Again, it is a very, very common question. Okay, repeat question. Describe the role of endothelial cells in the process of thrombosis. Briefly discuss significance of venous thrombus. Again, it is a repeat question. Describe the main classes of tumor antigens. Discuss the various mechanisms of immune invasion by cancer cells. Now, this question, though it is not a repeat question, but it is easy. It is easy. It is new, but it is easy. So, I will leave it. Not a problem. Write short notes on inflammatory biomarkers of SARS, COVID-2 infection and diagnosis of mucor mycosis. Again, Though these are easy questions, but they are not from the paper one, if you see. Okay. So again, I, I can take them. Okay. These are new. Okay. These are new. These, these are not very common question. Then write short notes on epigenetic changes in malignancy and neutrophil exercise. These are very direct question. Again, very common question. Discuss the role of following immunofluorescence and microRNA. Again, this is not very difficult. At least part A, microRNA is a very important paper one question. Immunofluorescence again, it is a basic science. Okay, again, it is a very commonly asked question. Okay, question number eight again. If you see, this is not a repeat question. Actually, granulomatous disease of the lung. You may write a lot of things like TB, sarcoidosis, many fungal infections also cause granuloma. So you can write about the granulomatous disease of the lung. But what is very important? This is a paper two question. Okay, this is a paper two question. It is not a paper one question. Okay, so again, this is not a very common question in paper one. Then question number nine, if you see is very common, okay, effect of ionizing radiation in the human body. But again, asbestos related disease of the lung, it is not very common. Again, this is not very common. Again, the question number 10 is very common, right? Short notes on Neiman Pax and Gotcha's very, very direct question, genetics. So if you see out of the 10 questions that we see, if you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So around 75% of this paper, if you see, it is very, very direct common repeat whereas the rest of them if you see they are not new questions in this particular paper what they have done question from paper 2 they have shifted the question to paper 1 so there is overlap and this is what is my next point actually if you see that some amount of overlap is usual among the different question paper so what do you mean by this that some questions from paper 2 can be asked in paper 1 can be asked in paper 4 some question from recent advance can be asked in paper 2 paper 3 paper 1 also so some amount of overlap sometimes is there or sometimes completely a new question is asked to you so over here if you see none of the questions are new but what you can see that some overlap is there like for example differential diagnosis of granulomatous disease of the lung though not a paper one question it is a paper two question common question asbestos related disease of the lung again it is a paper two question okay so these questions though they are very easy but there is there's an overlap okay okay now always remember that few new questions will be there for example if you see right now a very new question upcoming question which is there that discuss the pathological effects of radiation therapy and chemotherapy in breast carcinoma. This is new. But see the other questions. This second question is for myocardial infarction, repercussion injury, common. Then write notes on hormone producing tumors of ovary and osteoarthritis producing bone lesion. Again, very common. Describe the criteria for Gleason score and capsular invasion of follicle. Again, common question. Again, comment on histological grading of renal cell and surgical. Now, this part A is common, but part B question is not common. It is a new question. Surgical resection margins in specimen from patient with primary colon and rectal carcinoma. It's a new question. Okay, this is new. Again, if you see discuss neuroendocrine tumors of the GI tract with special reference to recent updates. Already have been discussed in details one year back in our website also. It's a very common question. It is actually not a common question. You can say it is a, it is basically a new question. It is a new question. It is a question on the recent advance. Okay. A new question has been added. Discuss in short about the immune mediated inflammatory disease of the glomerulus and the methods to unravel or what are the basic, what are the basic diagnostic methods for the same. So again, this is, you know, this is not a new question, but they have twisted the language. Again, it's a common question. Again, diabetic nephropathy directly. They have asked you again, common question. Diagnostic approach to vesicular bullous lesion of the skin. Again, a commonly asked question in the exam. 
Short notes on male infertility, morphological and IHC markers and differential diagnosis of mesothelioma and adenocarcinoma. Now again over here if you see one question, this is, this is though they are easy, one of them is a clinical pathology question, another one is your cytology question which is has been asked to you in the paper number 2 only. Okay. So what is very important over here if you see one new question, two new question, okay, around two to three new questions have been asked over here. Whereas again, if you see around 80% of the paper is again repeat question. Repeat with overlap. Okay, with overlap. Okay. So I hope this point is very crystal clear to everyone. Okay, it is clear to everyone. Okay, so few new questions will be there. Again, the time management and practice of writing an answer to the point is very important. Now, usually, for example, if you see over here, okay, you are having 10 questions, okay, and you are having 3 hours. That means you are having 15 minutes for individual question. So, time management is very, very important. Why it is important, I will tell you. Suppose, you know 10 questions and 10 answers also you know whatever questions has come is very easy and you know every one of them but all 10 of them they are lengthy answers so if you do not have the practice of summarizing the things and making it less and presenting your answer and that too you have to do everything in 15 minutes time then in that case you might be able to answer only seven or eight questions and you might be you know even though you know an answer you might leave them so, keeping a track of the time and keeping a track of the number of questions you have answered is very important. Else, you might be able to only answer 70% of the, of the questions or 80% of the questions. So, time management and practice of writing of answer and answer to the point is very, very important. So, you will only be able to manage the time when you are able to, you know, write, you know, you have the practice of writing and secondly, you are answering to the point. Okay, this is very important. So, suppose for example, if you can see in 3 hours you have to write so many things. Now, even if you know a lot about one particular answer, okay, you have to minimize it within say example 3 to 4 pages. You, you cannot go on, go, go on and keep on writing 16 pages, 20 pages answer. No, you cannot do that because in that case you are going to leave other questions which you know. So, time management is again very, very important. Then paper number 4 is the recent advance. And for the recent advance, I have already advised everyone that you have to read the, the, the recent advance 23-24 which was already there. Last year, the recent advance 25 has come in. Okay, so this is very, 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 very important. So, recent advance 25, if you see, they have lots of new questions and, and in this 2023 exam, okay, almost 100% questions came from your recent advance 25. So, this is utmost of utmost importance for paper number 4, number 1. Number 2, sometimes, uh, you know, uh, uh, they are asking that there is a recent advance for hematology as well. Usually, the recent advance hematology, uh, you know, they are basically asked in the paper 3. But sometimes in paper 4, they can ask you the recent advances from hemat also. Then you have to go for multiple articles. So, for example, for the last 6-7 years, you are seeing that certain questions are getting repeated. So, for example, some question like artificial intelligence in pathology or digital pathology or whole slide imaging concept. These are some new advances which are coming in the field of uh, pathology and you have to be very, very clear about these points. Okay, so there are multiple articles that we have shared in our group and you know, there are multiple art articles wherein you can, you know, you have to go through some articles for your recent advance. Now, how you should read the articles is very simple. An article can have 8-10 pages, okay. You are not supposed to sit down and spend 2-3 hours in a, one article. What you have to do, you have to take out 10 important points from the article. You have to write it down in a diary and you have to elaborate on those 10 points. So, in this way only you are able to read 10, 20, 30, 40 important articles. Else, if you are going to lay, you know, uh, spend a lot of time in individual articles, you will not be able to remember, neither you will be able to reproduce all the things. Along with that, WHO updates, they are often asked in paper number 4. Sometimes the special stains and even IHC markers like KI67 or for example, cytokeratins or PAS stain or any, you know, fungal stains. Okay, so they can be asked to you in the exams. Okay. One very important tip for your theory exam is that, that don't leave any question unanswered. Even if you don't know anything about a particular question, if you answer anything, just write down one page, two pages, just beat around the bush. At least 
out of 10 you will get two two and a half and that marks those marks can make a difference between pass and fail also so this is very 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 important for you these important tips and tricks and points that i've shared with you is very very important for you for your last minute uh, plans okay okay so now we are going to see what approach you should have for the practical so we have already seen the approach for the theory now we will see the approach that you should have for the practicals now for the practicals if you see you should have your admit card you should carry your microscope now usually the uh, you know your department is going to provide you one microscope okay for every resident who is going to sit for the exam but sometimes the microscope can become bad so everyone is advised to have their own personal microscope and you are not supposed to carry on the day of exam everyone is, has got a locker you keep your microscope inside the locker and you carry your microscope to your exam because during your exams you have very less amount of time and you cannot uh, you know waste the time in setting the microscope or changing the stage and you know doing all these things and thirdly very importantly you have to carry the thesis what i suggest you you keep all these things in a locker in your exam so that you don't have to worry on the day of exam so basically i am going to share you my experience what happens during the practicals so during the practicals it is divided into day 1 and day 2 i have already discussed in details okay what are the things which are asked in in the different sections and the in, in the different uh, you know tables i am not going to discuss that right now because already that has been described uh, you know de described in details in the exam pattern section what i am going to tell you is what is going to happen in the day 1 and day 2 so what happened with us in the day 1 we first started off with the clinical pathology hematology blood banking and biochemistry the first half of the day the first 3 hours starting from 9 am in the morning it went for this so what happened at, in the clinical pathology section there was a clinical exercise wherein i had to perform a urine examination as well including urine sugar urine proteins urine ketone bodies okay i also had a hematology exercise okay and along with that i had to perform a peripheral blood smear okay a leishman staining had to be performed by myself then there was a blood banking station wherein i had to do the blood grouping as well sometimes they will keep a gel card interpretation also or you might be asked to perform a cross match or you might be asked to perform a dct or direct coombs test also so an exercise with regards to blood banking will be there and then certain simple biochemistry exercises can also be there okay so certain particular exercise will be given to you and you will be asked to you know write down the relevant investigations for the same as well so these are some some of the exercises that will be there the clinical biochemistry part clinical pathology part the hematology and the blood banking part okay this will be there now very importantly after this initial exercise we also had the exam slides which were having the hematology as well as cytology slides including the pap and the fluid slides as well so around 1 hour you know went for this exam slides as well and then simultaneously when we were answering the exam slides exam slides uh, you know that was brought by the examiner we had to answer uh, you know we were having simultaneously gross autopsy and the museum specimen so you, one person had to you know simultaneously after the exam slides were done they were you know being uh, you know sent for the gross or the autopsy station uh, or uh, you know museum specimens were being asked so in the autopsy station uh, some museums were kept museum specimen were kept okay there were some post mortem changes that you have to answer okay that what is this describe this and what are the post mortem changes that you are there and then there of any autopsy related question can be asked again after that you will have to go separately into the grossing station wherein you will be asked about the different thing that we have already discussed okay you have to describe you have to do the real grossings and show the exam the take the sections and answer all the relevant questions asked by the examiner now while all these tests are being carried out okay an examiner is going to come and ospi will be carried out a viva will be carried out okay separately for all of them and the examiner will come and give you marks on individual stations depending on how you answer okay this is what happens in the day number 1 in the day number 2 what happens that the exam slides are there for histopathology the day started with the exam slide for histopathology around 12 to 15 such slides were kept okay now apart from that there is a particular after your exam slide now this happens that this goes on for nearly around 1.5 hours okay around nearly 1 and a half hours 1 and a half hours okay goes for this exam slide spotting 
then there is histocytotechnics also the tissue processing as i have already explained in before that you have to perform h and e staining one special staining routine stain is there one special stain like pass can be there then you might be asked to, to do the microtomy then they might take you to the tissue processing uh, section and they might ask you different theoretical questions over here if the cryostat machine is there some questions from the cryostat can, can, can be asked to you as well now after having completed all the stations okay so examiners might might either ask you individually at the respective station only they might take your viva or there is a grand viva wherein the examiner might ask you all the questions related to all the tests that you have performed okay and because your exam sheet is there your answers are there so they might judge you accordingly over there in the grand viva to be very honest okay you can be asked any and everything okay so usually in the grand viva the examiner brings in some charts like electron microscopy charts immunofluorescence chart fluoro flow cytometry charts some graphs hplc graphs electrophoresis you know levy jennings chart osmotic fragility charts there are multiple such basic science charts which the examiner might bring might not bring sometimes even if they bring they don't have time to ask okay so this is all it all depends on how and when and, and it also depends on the mood of the examiner what he wishes to ask what he does not wish to ask okay apart from that you will have a micro teaching session you will be evaluated on the micro teaching as well so this happened in the second day okay so this is all that is there in the practicals in the day one and in the day two okay and therefore and i have you know completely laid out separately what all stations are there so that you have to prepare individually for each station properly now some very important points that you have to understand in your practicals is that that always remember that the examiner is always right don't argue the moment you argue your exam goes down why i am i'm telling you remember one thing that the examiner is an examiner for many years he has been conducting exam for last 20 years he is an expert in his field you cannot match to his knowledge the knowledge that you garner in last 3 years in the 3 years that you are studying and the knowledge that the examiner has cannot be matched so you do not argue with the examiners because already pathology is very vast and it is not possible for every student to remember each and everything and it is very imperative that you are that, that the examiners they ask you some basic and simple questions if the examiner wants to fail you he will ask you many different questions you know and you will not be able to utter anything so it's very very important that you be very cordial with the examiner you should be very neat clean and you should be very presentable during your exams that 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 leaves a lot of impression on the examiner if you don't know you say i don't know don't utter anything stupid because once you utter anything stupid all of your viva goes in that stupidity and you tend to waste time of the examiner and the examiner gets irritated and he might not pass you in the exam okay always remember in your during your spotting during your exam slide identification and slot and, and uh, spotting be it uh, histopathology be it hematology be it cytology be anything you should not cheat don't cheat be honest don't copy diagnosis of others because once you copy the diagnosis of others okay just remember one thing the examiner will come to know because even if your description is right you must have copied even if your diagnosis is correct okay if the examiner will ask you how did you come to this diagnosis you will not be able to answer and in that case the examiner might not give you good marks okay remember don't cheat be honest you will pass 100% and remember that all basics are mainly tested in the exam for example they will ask you very very simple what is the difference between benign and malignant neoplasm they will ask you define neoplasm they will ask you define uh, uh, neoplasia or define acute inflammation what are the vascular events okay okay or they will ask you uh, define adaptation what are the different types of adaptation give some examples these are some very basic and simple questions that they will ask you in the exam okay and you should be able to answer these basics if you are not able to answer the basics you know then you you will not pass so in the exams it is the basics that is mainly tested okay now how do you prepare how do you prepare for the exam let me tell you so after your thesis submission is there so thesis has to be submitted okay at least 6 months before this is the nmc guideline you should uh, you know submit the thesis at least 6 months before your exams so once your thesis submission is there you should ideally be able to read 8 to 10 hours every day 
Now, as I have already discussed about this in my previous lectures also, okay, and I am repeating this once again for you all, that you should divide your subjects into heavy subject, light subject, and certain miscellaneous subject. So, the heavy subjects include general pathology and histopathology. Light subjects include cyto, hemato, and clinical pathology. And miscellaneous subjects include grossing, recent advance, and tissue processing, etc. So, you have to first divide all the subjects accordingly. Now, what happens that usually the last three months they are free or basically you get holidays in the last three months to prepare for your exam. You, so, you are relieved from your department. But this is not the case in all the, you know, in, in, in all places. So, for example, uh, you know, in at many places they are giving you just one month before the exam. So, in some places you don't get that much time. So, in that situation, I have, I have divided your preparation in two halves. First, if you have to do the preparation, okay, with the college activities, in that situation, you have to divide your day in this aspect. First, you have to wake up approximately 5 in the morning, 5 a.m. and you have to give 3 hours, okay, to the heavy subject. Now, very important, before you, you start your day, you have to start your day with revision. At least initial half an hour to 40 minutes, you have to revise what you read the previous day. So, you may have to wake up around 4, 4.30 in the morning or 5 o'clock in the morning, initial sometime 1 hour or half an hour, 40 minutes you give for revision. Then you start your day with the heavy subject. For example, day 1, you are doing general pathology. You give 3 hours straight for that. Then you go to the college. Now, I know that whenever you know you are, you have to do the departmental activities also, but because you are the third year, you are having the second year and the first year as well. So, you are easily able to take out two, two and a half hours during your college hours. And in this time, you should aim to complete the miscellaneous subjects like the grossing part, the recent advanced part, the tissue processing part. You should aim to complete them because they are lighter and they are easier to complete. Once you come back home, Okay, again, you have to touch the light subjects. Okay, you have to give three hours for your light subjects. Say you came back around 4.30, 5 o'clock, you took half an hour, one hour break, then again from 6 to 9, you have to sit down. Okay, so with your college activities, you have to continue and you have to read at least seven to eight hours every day while you're preparing for your exam. Now, suppose you don't have college. In that situation, again, it is very, very simple. Okay, you wake up in the morning and you sit for reading by 7 o'clock. So, 7 to 11, 3 hours you have to read the heavy subject. Before you start the heavy subject, you have to wake up for example, half an hour to 40 minutes before and you have to carry out revision. After that, after that, okay, you have to take on the lighter subjects, okay. You take half an hour break, okay, then 3 hours you go for the light subjects. Then again, you take, uh, you know, lunch break, you take some rest, sleep for some time, take a nap, then you come for the miscellaneous subject 3 hours, 4 to 7 p.m. So, Along with all these activities, okay, what I forgot to tell you is that you have to also, you know, take some leisure time because your mind is going to become saturated. So, in that particular time, you, you know, you can just go out, okay, you can go out, you can, you know, you can just go out and, you know, take, go out for a run, okay, or have some good food, okay, or watch some little, little movie clips or whatever makes you happy or whatever, you know, make, you know, bust, you know, whatever is the stress buster for you. So, whatever makes your stress less, you should do half an hour to one hour those activities also because else this preparation is very, very tough and it can get very boring at times. So, to keep the, you know, to keep your uh, motivation up, this becomes very important for you. Okay, do some exercises as well. Okay, now the final lap, the last 30 days, okay, now your exam has come, how you have to, you know, uh, see your final lap. So, final lap, whenever, for example, 30 days are, are remaining for your exam, you have to minus the last four days because you have to keep the last four days for your paper one that you will appear. So, in the last 30 days, if you see, or in the last 26 days, rather, you have to give general pathology seven to eight days for revision, heavy subject. You have to give the histopathology or systemic pathology seven to eight days again for revision. Uh, you know, you, ha you have to give uh, this much time. Hematology can be revised in three days. Cyto in two days, recent advance again require three days and whatever miscellaneous is there like grossing, tissue processing, autopsy, you know, an, 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 another two days. So, this comes up to nearly 24 to 26 days of time, which is more than enough time that you need for revision. 
and after that the remaining four days you prepare again the general pathology the paper one and you appear for your exam and then you give your exam accordingly okay so this is how you have to approach the 2024 exam now what is very important what we are going to do okay all the uh, simply pathology members who are enrolled and who are giving the exam we are going to create a whatsapp group a dedicated whatsapp group will be created for this purpose the exam going group will be there okay they will be added to a particular group okay and all the important exam related articles or exam related notes will be shared in that particular group for all the enrolled students okay anyone can ask any doubt over there and only the third year students will be eligible for this group third year residents who are in the final year will be eligible to enter this particular group okay and that will be a dedicated group for the same okay so i hope this is uh, crystal clear to everyone uh, regarding the exams thank you very much for watching this particular video